When Samuel was a boy, the Bible says that in those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. But when his mother Hannah dedicated Samuel to the Lord, all that changed. God spoke to Samuel and through Samuel to the people. The end? They lived happily ever after? Not quite. The Bible tells us that as time passed, Samuel's sons weren't much better than the sons of his predecessor Eli had been. The people were not looking forward to their leadership in the event of Samuel's passing. And though God taught the Palestinians a lesson when they stole the Ark of God, they did manage to steal it. God made them regret that theft and they sent it back with apologies and gifts. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it was fear of the future and the leadership of Samuel's corrupt sons, fear of vulnerability to neighbors like the Palestinians, or just a fear of being different from other countries. But the people came to Samuel and demanded that he appoint, for the first time in their history, a king over Israel. Well. Samuel was displeased and went to discuss this with God. God said, and let's not overlook the wonder <laughs> that Samuel would have a conversation with God. And God said, it is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. But God told Samuel to tell the people how having a king would play out, what they would sacrifice, to have an authoritarian ruler over them. And this is how the Bible says they responded. Quote, but the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and to fight our battles. They feared a future with Samuel's sons replacing him as a prophet. They feared their neighbors would conquer and pillage them. They feared being singled out as different. Fear, fear, fear. When we are filled with fear, we are vulnerable to deception, to be led in the wrong direction. We're more prone to believe what we want to hear than we are to believe the truth. In their fear, the people rejected God as their king, as their defender. To break that bond of faith that trusts God to protect and care for us is to put a distance between ourselves and God. Where there is a distance between ourselves and God, there is room for fear, but where there is faith and trust in God, there is peace. Psalm 23, 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David was speaking of God being like a shepherd there. A later prophet promised in Isaiah 26, verse 3, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. The Apostle Paul promised in Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Oh, how he loves you and me. Trusting in God's love and in his might casts out fear. We live in times where people are full of fear and desperate to find their security anywhere but with God. Should we trust in a king or authoritarian ruler? God said that was to reject him. Should we trust in our military, our nation, our system of government, our religious establishment? No, no, no. There is only one God. We have only one Savior. To know God, to trust God, to believe God, that is our only true security. Mm -hmm.